My name is Dr. Andrew Siegel. I'm a urologist from the New York metropolitan area and today I would like to discuss with you bladder cancer, a very important subject. The title slide here depicts what bladder cancer appears to us when we look inside the bladder with a small lighted instrument that is known as a cystoscope. This next slide illustrates the urinary tract on the left and the urinary tract consists of the kidneys, the two transport tubes that conduct the urine from the kidneys down to the urinary bladder, and finally the urinary bladder. The image on the right is the urinary bladder in a male. Note that the bladder has an inner lining and a thick muscular layer around it, and then a final fatty layer around the muscular layer. The next slide is a microscopic view of normal bladder. And the bladder has a very unique lining that is known as urothelium. It is unique to the urinary tract, present only within the lining of the uh, urethra bladder, ureters, and kidney. Let's discuss bladder cancer, some facts. In the United States, more than 60,000 patients per year are, are diagnosed with this disease. It is the number four cancer in men and the number eight cancer in women. It is correlated with the aging process. It is three times more common in men than women. It is highest in industrialized countries. And most bladder cancers are superficial cancers, which is a total type of disease and disorder from muscle invasive cancers. Superficial cancers affect only the most superficial layers of the bladder and muscle invasive cancers have roots in which they extend into the deep muscular layers. As far as the causes of bladder cancer, by far the number one cause is cigarette smoking. Most people have not heard that fact before. I mean lung cancer is most commonly associated with smoking but clearly cigarette smoking is a huge cause of bladder cancer and most patients diagnosed these days with bladder cancer were or are cigarette smokers. In addition, occupational exposure to other chemicals can result in bladder cancer and we typically see this diagnosis in certain occupations such as hairstylists, painters, machinists, printers, or workers in the dye, textile, rubber, and leather industries. Now, how does bladder cancer present to the patient? Most commonly, it causes blood in the urine, which is known as hematuria. And that's sometimes visible to the patient as red urine. And sometimes it's not. It's only picked up when you have a urinalysis at the time of your annual physical examination. Bladder cancer can also cause lower urinary tract symptoms, including changes in your normal urinary habits, such as sudden urgency, increased frequency, getting up at night, difficulty urinating, etc. Sometimes bladder cancer is picked up as an incidental finding on imaging studies done for other reasons. In other words, a CAT scan or an ultrasound done for a non-urological reason picks up a mass in the urinary bladder. And sometimes it's an incidental finding on cystoscopy done for other reasons. For example, the other day I was evaluating a woman who had a prolapsed bladder and when I cystoscoped her I found a bladder tumor. As far as how we evaluate blood in the urine in general, typically we do a cystoscopy and as I mentioned before it's a telescope-like flexible instrument that is placed in the urethra and gives us a very clear image of the urinary bladder. The top image depicts a cystoscope. Urinary cytology, which is a laboratory test in which the patient simply provides a urine specimen. And within the urine are cells that line the urinary tract that are sloughed off, like skin cells or hair cells, and that can be scrutinized by a pathologist under a microscope. And finally, imaging studies. And the imaging might be an ultrasound, it might be a CAT scan, it might be an MRI, depending on the different circumstances. This next slide shows two images. On the left is a cystoscopy of a normal healthy bladder and it typically looks like the white of the eye. 
There are lots of blood vessels. On the right is depicted a typical bladder cancer, and it looks like a stalk of cauliflower or broccoli. Very commonly, it's in this papillary format. This next slide depicts on the left a normal urinary cytology, and on the right, an abnormal urinary cytology. Cytology is a very useful test, simple laboratory test, for the evaluation and follow-up of people with bladder cancer. The next slide is a CAT scan of the pelvis of a patient with bladder cancer. And a CAT scan is essentially a slice of the body, like a slice of bread. In this particular slide, the blue arrow points to a mass within the urinary bladder. And that mass happens to be a, a bladder cancer. How do we manage bladder tumors? Once a bladder tumor is diagnosed, it needs to be treated. And the way it's treated is through a, an operation, usually done under anesthesia, in which the tumor is completely removed. Typically, the procedure is called a transurethral resection, meaning we go through the urethra with an instrument. Resection means partial removal of the urinary bladder. In other words, removing the tumor and some tissue deep to it and it's done with a loop that is attached to an electrical source. And when the loop is moved through tissue, it essentially removes the tissue in pieces. And then, depending on how large the tumor is, the pieces essentially are irrigated out of the bladder and are submitted to the pathologist as a specimen. And the same loop that is used to cut out the tumor is also used to cauterize or coagulate the base of the tumor to stop bleeding. This is an image of a patient. On the left is the actual bladder tumor before the transurethral resection, and on the right is the cystoscopic image after the transurethral resection. What information do we get from a transurethral resection? We get very important pathological information. Number one, is the tumor benign or is it malignant? What is the type of the tumor? And as I stated before, most of the time it's the tumor originating from the unique lining of the urinary tract called urothelial lining. We get information about the depth of the tumor. Is it superficial or is it deep? If deep, how deep? What is the grade of the tumor? Grade refers to how similarly the tumor resembles normal cells under the microscope versus abnormal cells. And the appearance of the tumor. Is it papillary or frond and feather-like? Or is it sessile, meaning it has a solid base? And finally, how many tumors are there? And what is the size of the tumor? Well, I hope you uh, enjoyed a primer on bladder cancer. For more information, you can go to our website at bergenurological.com, where you may download patient educational information. You may also find information on health and fitness on the website findyourfountainofyouth.com where if you would like you can download a free electronic copy of uh, my book on health, wellness, fitness, and longevity. Thank you.